Dorothea Lange is one of the giants of American photography. Her work defined the possibilities of documentary photography in the 1930s, revealing that refined artistry and a quest for social justice can go together. Lange's vision crystallized in 1932, a low point of the Great Depression. She had been a successful studio photographer, making portraits of people who paid her for well-crafted, flattering images of themselves. What she saw on the streets pulled her out of the controlled studio environment and into the raw reality of people struggling to survive the Great Depression. Made some photographs of the state of people in an area of San Francisco which revealed how deep that depression was. It was at that time beginning to cut very deep. This is a long process, it doesn't happen overnight, you know. It, it, people, life for people begins to crumble on the edges, you know, they don't realize. But this particular section was not far from the place where my studio was. I had done some photographs of this. And one of them is one of my most famous photographs. I made that on the first day. I made the old man with the tin cup. It was the first day. That was lucky. Had I struggled along for months and months with this material, but I saw something and I encompassed it and I had it. When Lang says she caught it with this picture, she must mean the way the composition captures from the chaotic flow of events a symbol of the times, of the meaning of the times. The composition is what does that. Composition is the main tool of a photographer. The act of framing is where the photographer stamps an intention onto the scene. So here, the photographic frame centers on the one man turned away from the crowd, his battered hat and tin cup expressing, revealing his destitution. The rest of the picture space is taken up by men with their backs to us. The repetition of their crowded bodies and circular hat forms is almost cubist in its compression of space and it's the dynamic instability it creates in the pictorial space. We get different kinds of hats at different angles which hint at these men having once did done different kinds of work possibly from different socioeconomic strata, before winding up together in a bread line. The composition dramatizes the tension between the individual and the masses. And in plucking out one man for our focus, it tells us about the lonely individuality that each of these men carries in this struggle to survive. So let's hear more from Dorothea Lange about what makes some of her photographs so famous. Here she is. I have made a few photographs in my life that have really taken hold. They've really taken root all over the world. It embarrasses me. They're not, no longer my own. For some peculiar, strange reason that I don't understand, that I haven't the answer for. Why those? There is something in them that has reached people all over. The camera is an instrument that teaches people how to see without a camera. We heard Lang talk about photographs 
that have taken root in the human consciousness because of something strange or peculiar in them. But she's being a little bit too modest because she very, very deliberately crafted her photographs and worked hard to instill that something peculiar, that compelling strangeness in them. So the best example is her migrant mother, which is probably the most enduringly iconic of all her famous images. As Lang tells the story, in early March 1936, she was driving past a sign that read P. Pickers Camp in Nipomo, California. She was then working as a photographer for the Resettlement, Resettlement Administration, which would later become to be called the FSA, the Farm Security Administration. And her job was to raise public awareness of the struggle of farming, farmers and migrants and to, so that aid could be provided to them. So 20 miles down the road, having driven past the sign, she decides to turn back. She goes to the camp and she sees there a mother and her children. She says, I saw and approached the hungry and desperate mother as if drawn by a magnet. She said they had been living on frozen vegetables from the surrounding field and birds that the children killed. So this hungry, cold family of four children and a mother who are living in a patched together rough tent on poles, which are really just big sticks. She first photographs them from a distance. She's looking at them in the environment of the tent, this shelter that isn't much of a shelter, against the field and the trees. She's thinking in terms of a document of what's happening to them, what are their surviving survival conditions, where are they? She goes on to make a number of frames and each time getting in closer. So then we have a frame of the mother herself with the smallest, youngest of the children, the infant, who's suckling at her breast. So she's getting very intimate here. We have the intimacy of being able to see her breastfeeding. We have the theme of hunger and nourishment. We see her face more clearly. The, the look on her face of strain, of worry, of despair, as she seems to be pondering what to do to help her children. And then Lang starts to become interested in different angles and the way that the mother is arranged with more than one child to create a kind of circle of love, a circle of warmth in this cold, desolate poverty that they're enduring. In the final image, we have a kind of a portrait now, not the, the kind of document of their sociological conditions that we began with with the tent but now a portrait of her actually quite close we can see her hand we can see the complicated look on her face the children have their backs turned to us which interestingly for me reminds me of the white angel bread line the combination of the face toward us and the faces away from us as if they are snuggling hiding in her as if they're trying to find shelter in her and then the little baby held in her arms, there's a kind of a circle formation. And what's been, what's happened is she's given a quality of tremendous dignity, purity, even sacredness. So what is often commented on is that the, the migrant mother here begins to look like a Madonna. She has the, she evokes the entire Christian artistic tradition of Mary, the Madonna, with baby Jesus. And so we have this sense of a redemptive power. We have a sense that we should see them, their suffering as tremendously noble. This is a huge, significant, a kind of connotation for laying to bring in. Because in America, aid to the poor has always been tied to judgments about deserving and undeserving. That was certainly part of the issue with getting support for the New Deal programs. Were these people deserving of help? This is part of the, the politics of, of government aid to the needy today. And so in a society where we think of the wealthy as, quote, successful and the poor as, quote, failures, 
it becomes easy to write off the suffering of the poor. And Lang knew her job was to show them as not at all failures, but as noble, as vulnerable, as dignified, and as a, and a, a deserving of regard. So Lang's process of searching frame by frame for different possibilities of how to present this migrant family she was tremendously successful in this because this picture was actually published in what was the newspaper of San Francisco at the time called the San Francisco News under the headline, Ragged, Hungry, Broke, Harvest Workers Live in Squalor. And so it was published with an editorial that said, what does the New Deal mean to this mother and her children? which was, you know, an editorial pointing the finger at the governmental agency saying, where's your new deal? Why is she and why is she and her children living on frozen vegetables in the fields and birds that the kill children can kill? So the same day, the Los Angeles Times reported that because of this photograph, the State Relief Administration would deliver food rations to 2,000 itinerant fruit pickers who were in Napomo, California the next day. The, the power of this photograph to ennoble, to dignify, to create an aura of even sacred suffering, this all literally led to action in terms of getting food to the fruit pickers. So one of the things to know about this photograph is that Lang is very conscious that we have now entered in 1936 the world of the photo magazine. Life magazine was first published in 1936 with this photograph by Margaret Burke White of a dam, a monument to modern engineering. And what we're seeing with Life Magazine is what we could maybe call the Instagram of its day. We're seeing a world of pictures that get circulated that tr have a tremendous influence on people's thinking. So we talk about influencers on um, Instagram today. And, you know, Lang was a kind of an influencer with her photographs. This is a time where what we today call messaging through the media is becoming more and more a part of politics. And we will actually see that FDR will have his own filmmaker that he uses to help dramatize and explain to the American people the dust bowl that, that was destroying farm life and led to migrants like the ones we saw in Migrant Mother moving to California to try to pick fruits and vegetables. And then, of course, we will also see that totalitarian dictators like Hitler will also start to use film and photography as their media modes of persuasion as propaganda becomes more and more infiltrated into political life and everyday cultural life.